Get ready. Hello YouTube and welcome to another RPG Maker MV tutorial. In today's video we're going to be looking at lights, how you can place lights down in your game, dynamic lights that can be triggered at certain times of the day. This is going to be using free plugins that I provide in the description. The link will be there so check that out and go download them. When you've downloaded it you'll have a zip file called RPG Maker MV Game Time Plugins, extract that, then you have a folder like this, open up the folder, open up this folder, then there you've got editor and lights, click on one, hold down control, click on the other, right click and copy them, then when you look for your project, if it's defaulted, it should be in your documents, go to your game project folder, mine's RPG Maker Tutorials, then go into um, images and paste both folders inside here. So you've got editor and lights. Inside editor you've got three icons, if you don't do this it won't work, it will crash. And inside lights you've got light textures. Then what you're going to want to do is come back here, highlight these three plugins, LMN, Game Editor called Game Time and Lighting Tool, right click on them all copy come to your project folder go to js folder javascript go to plugins and plug them in now sorry paste them in now when that's all done load up your rpg maker go to plugin manager as you can see i've got all three loads in i'll just delete them so you can see how i do it if you've got any yamfly plugins make sure they go underneath your yamfly plugins it's best to put these plugins in the right order but at the bottom of your plugin list if you've, got, if you've already got plugins, so double click on a line, then click on the drop down box, install game editor core, we don't have to worry about that, it's, this is just the default editor core for LMN to get their plugins working, so make sure that one's at the bottom of your plugin list first, then click on the line again, then install game time, click OK, then click on the line again, then click on LMN lighting tool, click OK, then we'll click on game time, Make sure enable is set to true. We're going to set our default time. We want it near night time. We're going to set it at, use the 24 hour clocks. We'll set it at 2150, which is 950. So the game will start at 950. Time lapse speed. I've got another tutorial on this time system, so I won't go into it too much. That's basically going to be every second of real time. It's going to be a minute progressing in the game. And everything else will have this show clock on map we'll have that set to true so we can see the clock on the map that's all we have to do for there so this isn't a time system tutorial although you need the game time to make the lighting work if you can have it triggered on at certain times then go to the lighting tool by double click on it make sure they're all turned on and then where's the incompatibility fix double click on that and type in true just in case you have any bugs or any problems with it don't worry about the random flick you can leave all this alone as it is but what I will say, you've got all the plugin commands down here. These are the commands. The one we're going to be looking at today is this command here, the one that I'm highlighting. Highlight this, where it says light limit 10 to 6 ID 1. That's basically saying that the lights will turn the lights will turn on at 10 o'clock and turn off at six o'clock light ID one. Just remember that. Then if we play our game, what we will do play the game. As you can see it's default to nine fifty because it's night time. The when you're in the game press tab and it'll bring these two icons. You can set the time of day there, but don't worry about this icon, click on the light. Then you can choose whether you want ambient, which will place an ambient light down, which fills up the whole screen, well, quite a lot of the screen, or torch, or bonfire, like that. We'll just delete these. We'll click on torch. But since we want street lamps, we want to flick this one to false, and pulse to false, which so is static. Then you can click on it, and you drag it across to where you want it. Then you want alpha left on one, but if you turn it down, We'll just lessen the light a little bit leave it on one it's best that way and turn up size to expand the radius we'll turn our size up to say 2.75 we'll say 
three two five. Then we'll turn the hue to seventy to give it that real warm street light effect. So seventy five, that'll do. And then we can click on it and we can press Ctrl and C to copy, then press Ctrl and V to paste, so we've got the exact same properties of the light. Then we'll add this one, we'll add this one like a a broken light, like it's flickering. So we'll turn we'll leave pulse off, we'll turn flicker back on. You've got flick intensity, so we'll turn the flick intensity up to about see what it looks like in a second. Then turn the flick speed up some as well up to 3.25 that was now flickering we'll turn the intensity up again up to about 575 or about 525 there we go and the flick speed up to about 575 then we'll copy this one click on it press ctrl c ctrl v to paste and when you are pasting down where says light source ID, keep remember this number six. When you place them all down, just remember look what number you start on and what number you end on. If you want to activate them at certain times. This is this is light ID six, that's light ID four, and that's light ID five. So we want five to six at the moment. So we click on that, control C, control V to paste. Put that light over here. And we'll just press tab to put on the new way. I don't know why he's not moving. But he's not bloody moving. Put a light over there. And a light over here. So we start on four and we've got up to nine. So remember the numbers four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. Yours might be different, might start on light ID source zero whichever light you want you got to remember that the source ID we started on four and we finished on nine then you can press tab to get rid of it and it'll save it automatically you can just delete you don't have to save the game you just delete it or oh, sorry end the game then we'll come back then what you want to do if you want to get them to turn on at a certain time you've got various plugin commands look if you go back to game time since you've got sorry not game time since you've got game time installed it'll automatically set a 24 hour clock It'll get dark about 9, 9.30 and light again about 6, 6.30. So if we click on lighting tool and you've got all the commands down here, look, you can change, turn light on or off, light hue, light reset, player torch, all that. The best one to use, what we're going to be using, is this one here, look, light limit. That's basically saying light limit. Turn on at 10, turn off at 6 for light ID source 1 and numbers we've talked about, which ours goes from 4 to 9. Then what you want to do, when you've got them all, all your lights set up and you remember all the numbers, just create an event. Then, make sure it's auto run. And same as characters, because if you've got like 50 lights, You've got to have 50 plugin commands, and if you have that on parallel, it'll just slow your computer right down to a crawl. This is a bit of clever programming that it turns it on, so it'll activate, but then it turns it off straight away, but the lights will still keep going. So it's not constantly processing it frame after frame after frame. If you've got like 50 lights, that'll just slow it right down. This way it turns on the program to activate the lights, then it turns off the program, but the lights will still be activated. So sit, click, click, start at the same as characters, or below characters, and have it on auto run. Then you want to create a switch, so double click, go there, go to control switches, and then click on this box, and I've called mine turn on street lights. So name one called turn on street lights, click OK, make sure the operation is set to on. I'll just delete that because we've got one up here, look. Control switches, turn on street lights equals on. Then come here and go to conditional branch, and don't worry about check in the create else branch leave that off click up here and click on turn on street lights make sure it is on and that's basically this one here and then what you want to do is uh left click go to tab three click in plugin command then type in that command you got from the um 
lighting tool plugin manager and my command was light limit 10 o'clock turn on 6 30 turn off we haven't got a light zero one it starts from four so we click on four what i will do is i'll just do these slightly different minutes so the turn out different minutes to keep it within seven to ten minutes okay we have more at the same time they all turn out at the same time it look a bit unbelievable our street lights come on within a few seconds or a few minutes of each other so we'll have it on 1001 and we'll copy that paste it a bunch of times then we'll click on that press space to edit it and we'll have that on 10 o'clock and that would be number five because we go all the way up to nine and we'll have it turn we're not going to really see it turn off so we won't bother doing that then we'll have this one We'll have that on two and we'll have that on six then we'll have this one on three we'll have that on seven then we'll have that on one and we'll have it on eight then we'll have it on nine and we'll have it on 10 or 1002 and then what you do is you um go back to control switches go, go at the bottom go to control switches make sure you've got your turn off turn on street lights and set it to off like that you've got two of them and delete one so you've got control self switches turn on street lights is on then you've got conditional bright saying if turn switch on called turn on street lights is on do these plugin commands and then turn the control switch off and make sure it's auto run same as characters something quite wrong there four five six seven eight nine we don't need these last two yep if you go back to our game at 10 o'clock the lights should start to turn on but they'll turn on within several minutes of each other all of them won't turn on at once one will turn on once then a minute later another one will turn on then a minute later two will turn on so on and so forth so we play the game now as you can see the time is now 9.55 when it gets 10 o'clock it should all start to turn on within several minutes of each other there's one the flickering one that comes on that comes on then that comes on pretty good no you like you like if we go to the shopper it won't move because i've got it on auto run so that that's a bit of a problem so what we can do if you haven't got too many lights so it won't move unless you do it auto run if you're doing auto run you can click on parallel event if it doesn't work on auto run you can and you want it on auto run you can Double click there and click control self switch and do a different event page and click on that. If we put on parallel, now we should be able to move. Look, now we can move. We won't be able to go in the shop because it's shut. Because it shuts at 5 30. Sorry, the store is now closed. Now the lights will come on. One comes on, two come on, three comes on, four comes on. And that's how you can easily add dynamic lights to your game YouTube if you like this video at all please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so I always appreciate new followers until next time YouTube look after yourself this is Bad Apple Gamer and I'm signing out yeah.